speakers and guests. Amen. Amen. To SNBC. Amen. If you're worshiping with us for the first or second time, we want to welcome you. We thank God for you, for allowing you to come into this place to worship God in spirit and in truth here at SNBC. And for my members who are uh, worshiping with us virtually, we thank God for you as well. Amen. Continue to worship with us in virtual presence. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Barlow, and the entire SNBC family, we welcome you. We thank God for you for welcoming in the sanctuary of praise. Amen. Let's give God praise for our visitors and guests. Amen. 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 We want to, amen. You may be seated at this time if you would like. Amen. We want to continue to worship God in our giving. Amen. We know the Lord has been good to us how he has blessed us, how he has provided for us, how he's made way for us. Amen. There may be a season in your life where you weren't able to give, and God has blessed you to be able to give. And we want to thank you for your generosity and sacrifice and how you continue to sow into the ministry here at SNBC. There are several ways you can give. You can give through Cash App. You can give through PayPal. You can give through Givelify. Or you can mail your tithe and offering to the church. However you choose to give. We just want to make sure you have that opportunity. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. How many of you know that you're blessed? Let me see those hands if you're blessed. If you're worshiping with us virtually, let us know how blessed you are. Amen. We're blessed. Amen. We're blessed. Amen. How many you know that late in the midnight hour, God is working it out? We know that it's going to work in your favor. Come on, praise team. Late in the midnight hour. Late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Come on, if the Lord's been good to you, say late in the midnight. Late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Come on, y'all. Help me praise him. Late in the midnight. Late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. For the devil, For the devil is, defeated. is defeated. We are blessed. Amen. Put your hands together if you know you're blessed. Amen. Come on. I know it's cold outside, but let's make it warm in here. Amen. The Lord has been good to you. Amen. Amen. Let's now stand all over this place as we prepare to recite our vision statement with clarity and with conviction. Our vision statement reminds us of who we are. As a local church, we want to recite this with clarity and with conviction this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. I see a people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. We see people worshiping, praising, and serving him. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. We see people of all creeds and nations and genders learning about him. I see compassionate work in the lives of people. We see God's principles at work in every arena of life. I see a community of believers in daily communion with the creator of life. Let us all say together, we see transformation and let it start with me. Put your hands together for our vision statement on today. Amen. Amen. We're going to be blessed with our scripture and prayer by our very own elder Bruce Hams at this time. Amen. Scripture is taken from Mark 4, 35 through 41. On that day, when the evening had come, he told them, let's cross over to the other side of the sea. So they left the crowd and took him along since he was already in the boat. And the other boats were with him. A fierce windstorm wind arose, and the waves were breaking over the boat 
so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, sleeping on the cushion. So they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care that we are going to die? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Silence, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he said to them, Why are you fearful? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked one another, who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The word of God for the people of God in the church said, amen. Amen. It's prayer time. I'm going to ask that we all bow our heads in reverence to taking this time and speaking with God. Let us pray. Our Father in our heaven, we begin by saying thank you. Thank you, God. We say thank you, Lord, because first and foremost, you woke us up this morning. Yes, yes. Realizing, Father, as we laid down last night, we had no power on our own to wake up. But, oh, God, you saw fit to give us another day. Father, we said thank you. Thank you God. We ask, oh, Father, that you come in the midst of this service. Yes, Lord. Allow this preacher to give us a relevant word that will help us yes. to continue on this journey to stay in yes. communion with you. Yes, Lord. For we realize we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, Lord. So, Lord God, this day, as we gathered in this place, we ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to illuminate our understanding and our minds and our spirits so that, Lord, we will keep you at the forefront of everything we say and do. We ask also, Father, that you bless the shepherd of this house, bless his family, and bless him as he continues on this journey. And then, Father, when it's all said and done, when we've preached our last sermon and sung our last song, realizing on this side, Lord, over you, over them, mm-hmm. where the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary be at rest, yes, Lord. we'll sing a new song. Yes, Lord. But until that day, Lord, yes. please come in the midst of this service. Yes, Lord. And if there's one soul out there, Lord, this morning that don't know you stand in the pardon of their yes, sins, yes, I pray, Lord, by way of the Holy Spirit, that you will urge them to come see a man. They can tell us all about ourselves. Yes, Lord. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 I don't know what your storm is today. We all deal with a lot of different things. But just know that we've been only endures for a night. And our joy is going to come in the morning. Yes. Yes. Our lives are in his hands. Hallelujah. Let's worship him in this place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, 
Just lift your hands and say. There's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. Y'all help me sing that. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you've Deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. 
for the home mission uh, this come last Thursday and then too much preaching go on even though I put in the work uh, we are actually hacked those who uh, will do it we are actually hacked seriously uh, and uh, so that check that down and then we uh, what they do it I'm going to try to meet it yet try to do it again with them with a small group of people and uh, wasn't too much preaching going on after that and it really it put me or blew me away for a minute I dreamed about all that stuff for a minute but anyway uh, we're going to do uh, the ask Elder Bruce to preach and uh, he's worthy to preach and I'm worthy to hear to hear him amen. and uh, amen if he's not going to put the clock on him this morning Let him preach, amen. We're going to take the dryers off of him this morning, amen. <laughs> As I was told, Mike, we're going to take the dryers off of him. Let him preach, amen. <laughs> and so we'll thank God for him and all that he does here at uh, Catherine Baptist Church. So we know he can preach, and so we'll, let's get ready, amen, to hear a, a, a great word, a mighty word from the Lord, amen. amen. Desire to 
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for in advance of having your way. Pray, Lord, that you would move mightily in this place. Speak to our hearts. Allow your Holy Spirit to fall fresh on us. You are the potter and I am the clay. Take full control of our heart and mind and use me for your own glory. All that I am, I am because of thee. And all that I'm not, I'm not because of me. God, help me to say it right. Help your people to hear it right so that we all can get it right. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's just give God praise in this place. Amen. Amen. I want you to pray for me did not get much sleep last night because my wife is out of town. When she's out of town, I don't sleep too well at night. And so y'all pray for me. Let the Lord give me strength to preach this morning. Amen. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I greet you with Jesus joy this beautiful Sunday morning. The Lord is still good. And he is worthy to be praised. To my pastor, who I love and respect so much, I thank God for him and for giving me this opportunity to stand to share with you. And to my friend and brother, Elder Bruce Holmes, to Minister Donna, to the deacons of our church, to the trustees of our church. It's just good to be in God's house once again. Let's not take this opportunity for granted. Because somebody wanted to go to church this morning but couldn't. But God allowed us to be here. And for that, we give him praise today. We thank God for this amazing praise team and these musicians and how they, amen, continue to prepare for worship that makes preaching a lot easier <laughs> because the atmosphere is already set for good preaching. Amen. And to you who are watching with us virtually, we thank God for you and your virtual support and how you continue to sow into this ministry uh, with your time, talent, and treasure. There's a word we want to look at that comes out of the gospel recorded by Mark. Mark chapter 5, excuse me, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. The text is on the screen behind me. If you're physically able, if you would stand with me as we read the word of God together. It was read in your hearing by Elder Hams. There's a portion that I want to read. We don't have to read the entire thing over again. But start at verse 37, and the text says, from the Holman Christian Standard Bible, it says, A fierce windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking over the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he, Jesus, was in the stern sleeping, on the cushion. So they woke him up and said to him, his disciples, teacher, don't you care we're going to die? One translation says perish. Jesus got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, silence be still. One translation says peace be still. The wind ceased and they were 
and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you fearful? Do you have no faith? And verse 41 says, and they were terrified and said to one another, who then is this? King James says, what manner of man is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. With your prayers and with the Lord's help, I want to talk from this subject, the perfect storm. The perfect storm. Webster defines the colloquial expression perfect storm as a critical or disastrous situation created by an occurrence of factors. an occurrence where certain elements work together in concert to create an outcome. H. Beecher Hicks, pastor emeritus of the Metropolitan Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., in his book entitled Preaching Through the Storm, defines life in three categories. Dr. Hicks says either you're currently in a storm or you're coming out of a storm or either you're headed to a storm. currently in a storm, you're coming out of a storm and it's possible that you are headed to a storm. It says to us that the storms of life are inevitable. That I don't care how saved you are, how well you preach, how gifted you are, how well you sing or pray, all of us eventually will have storms. Because either you're currently in a storm or either you're coming out of a storm or either you're headed to a storm. I don't need much help on today to testify that somebody in here is in a storm. That the storms of life will come unannounced. The storms of life come unexpected. How do you handle life when you're in a storm? Somebody needs to be encouraged today to know that while yet you're in a storm, we serve a God who's still on the boat. That's the good news. That regardless of whatever storm you're facing in life, the Lord promises to never leave us nor forsake us. Amen, somebody. And such is the case that we're presented with in Mark chapter 4, verses 31 through 41. The text is simple. Y'all stay with me. Mark says that Jesus had been preaching all day to the crowd. 
And to be able to do ministry effectively, he had to get in a boat where he could see everybody. But because the crowd was so big. The text says that when evening was come, he asked the disciples to go with him to the other side. The text says, Mark specifically, because Matthew and Luke share this account. Mark is the only account that shares with us that not only the disciples got in the boat, the other people got in their boats and followed Jesus to the other side. The text says that the disciples voluntarily got in the boat with Jesus, at Jesus' invitation. And the boats with that were surrounding followed and did likewise. Text says while they were on the sea, the Bible says a storm or wind came. And water from the Sea of Galilee began to flood the boat. In the midst of the boat flooding, the disciples begin to panic and worry. The text says that Jesus was asleep at the stern on a cushion. The text says while the boat was being infiltrated with water, the disciples woke Jesus up and asked him, do you care that we're getting ready to die. The Bible says that Jesus rebuked the wind. And the Bible says that a calm came over the wind. It doesn't stop there. Because immediately after Jesus stopped the storm, he asked the disciple a series of questions. He asked them, why are you fearful? And where is your faith? The text says that after he asked the question, Bruce, the disciples stood in awe and fear. And they asked among themselves, what manner of man is this where he can speak to the storm and the storm ceases? That's the story. Now let's back it up. Because I believe there are some things that God wants to share with us and we can all go home and enjoy some football together. The thesis or the proposition of this Easter speech is this. A faith that has not been tested is a faith not worth having. That's the proposition, that's the scope or sequence of this Easter speech. That a faith that has not been tested is a faith not worth having. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you this, if you didn't know this already. God sends storms into our life to test our faith. God sends storms into our life. To increase our faith. God sends storms into our life. To develop us to be the Christians that we need to be. A faith that is not tested is a faith not worth having. So many of us talk a good talk. Until the storm comes. 
Because it's easy to trust the Lord Bishop when your bills are paid on time. It's easy to trust the Lord when your children acted like they've been raised right. It's easy to trust the Lord when you have a good paying job to go to. But let hard times fall. Do you still have the same faith that you had in good times that you do in bad times? A faith not worth testing is a faith not worth having. God will test your faith. And he doesn't care how you feel about it. Because his responsibility is to grow you and to mature you and to get you to where he promised he'll get you to be. Text says, Jesus invites the disciples to get in the boat. <laughs> Jesus was already in the boat. And he invites them to go with him. Brothers and sisters, Mark's gospel teaches us overall that the cost of following Jesus can sometimes put you in danger. I know that wasn't real popular with some because we've been taught that once you have been saved, life becomes easy. But I want to let the real Christians know that once you have been saved, then life becomes more difficult because it becomes it difficult because we now are fighting against adversaries and spiritual warfare. He tells him to get in the boat with Jesus. Jesus does not coerce the boys to come with him. He asks them. And watch this. The only way that the others could be with Jesus is that they had to get in their own boats to follow him. Are you willing to follow Jesus even if it costs your life? They get in the boat and they get on the sea. Watch this, y'all. This is what really got me. The boys or the disciples were experienced fishermen. Six of them were. Two of them knew how to handle boats in those kinds of situations. But in this particular situation, they become fearful and they lose sight of what they know. Lord have mercy. And the text says that when they seen the water coming into the boat, they became fearful. Now, the Sea of Galilee, where they were, sits, sits below sea level. Scholars and theologians said it sits roughly 682 feet below sea level. What creates a storm, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Warm air rises, and it collides with cool air, which causes clouds to hit against each other. Now, where they were, it wasn't a strange thing to have this kind of storm. All right, all right. But the boys go into this situation unprepared. But they got Jesus on the boat. The good news of this text, y'all, is this. Is that even when we're unprepared for our storms, the Lord is still with us. That when storms come into our life, and we don't know how we're going to handle it. The good news is God is always with us. Can you say amen to that? There was a storm in your life where you didn't know how you were going to make it. Where you didn't know what you were going to do. But the Lord stayed on the boat with you. Amen. They're on the Sea of Galilee. 
and they're in the storm, and Jesus is sleeping. <laughs> the disciples become offended at Jesus being asleep on the boat while the storm is taking place. Jesus' faith is now misunderstood for sarcasm. The boys ask Jesus, do you care if we die? Brothers and sisters, let me tell you what crazy faith will do. Crazy faith will put you in opposition with people who can't handle the storm. When your faith in God becomes so secure, when your faith in God becomes so strong, don't expect others to go along with what you see and how you feel when things around you are falling apart. People expect you to act like how they act, but the Bible teaches us that when we have faith in God, we can be steadfast unmovable, always abounding in God's work because we know he's the master of the sea. When the storm comes, don't act like other folk. Don't become fearful. Do what Jesus did. Peace be still. Jesus was sleeping at the stern. Notice this Jesus' location. The stern of the boat was where the navigation of the boat took place. Jesus would sleep at the wheel, which suggests that his hands, Lord have mercy, were not on the stern. But the boat was still going in the right direction. Y'all, this going to shout you right here. The good news is that God doesn't have to touch your storm to make your storm cease. God doesn't have to touch the wheel to make sure that your life is moving in the right direction. As long as God is on the boat, it's all good. Because wherever God is, my security is. Wherever God is, my salvation is. Wherever God is, my faith is. If you go to sleep at the wheel, you can have an accident. But the good news of this text is God can go to sleep at the wheel and we still can be rolling. I wish I had half a church that could get excited about that. That King Jesus can sleep at the wheel and we're still moving in the right direction. Luke says that Jesus fell asleep. Mark says that Jesus was already asleep. If Luke's account is correct, it would suggest that Jesus saw the storm coming. And went to sleep. Lord have mercy. Now Mark's gospel was written first and Matthew and Luke Take their perspective from Mark's gospel. All right, all right. But Luke says in his account that when they were on the boat, Jesus went to sleep, which suggests he saw the storm coming and did nothing about it. Ladies and gentlemen, may I say to you on today that this naming and claiming faith that we have learned to embrace is not biblical faith. God will sometimes permit the storm in your life intentionally just to see how you will respond. Jesus sees the storm, according to Luke, and goes to sleep. 
Mark says he sleep at the cushion, which means he's comfortable. The water was coming into the boat, and he was still asleep. Okay, let's try that again. The water and the wind was hitting the boat, and Jesus was still asleep. Y'all don't let me down. Water and wind was hitting the boat, and Jesus was still asleep. When you know who you are and whose you are, you don't have to panic in the storm. You can stay right where you are doing what you're doing because you know the storm does not dictate what you will do. Here it is, y'all. The disciples were not necessarily afraid of the storm, but they were afraid of the effects of the storm. And it wasn't until water began to come into the boat to where they panic. What is it about us that when things become so personal and intimate, we throw our faith overboard and we begin to respond in a humanistic way. You know, it's easy to tell people to trust God. It's easy to tell people to have hope and to believe and to have faith. But what do you do when that storm is so close and so personal? And that situation is so touchy and sensitive to where your faith is now being challenged and tested. God is wanting to grow us to a certain place in him to where no matter what we go through, we can learn to trust God at any time. Amen, somebody. They were on the boat. The water was coming in the boat. Jesus was snoring. The disciples were tripping. And they ask him, do you care that we perish? Let me fall back just for a minute. Mark chapter 4, at the beginning, Jesus shares a series of parables regarding the kingdom of God. He was teaching his disciples about the secret and mystery regarding the kingdom of God. And now, Jesus is in a ship in a storm with the people that he was talking to. Let's try that again. Jesus was teaching the disciples about the kingdom of God and about who he was along with already seeing the various miracles that he'd already performed. And now they're in the ship with Jesus in a storm. Try one more time. Jesus would have been teaching the disciples about the kingdom of God. The disciples had already witnessed what Jesus could do. And now they're in a boat with Jesus in a storm. Mark gives us this account about Jesus in the boat in the storm with the disciples because this. He wants us to know that whatever God says, God can do. Jesus speaking to the storm validates not only his power over humanity, but his power over creation. The good news is that the Lord doesn't have to necessarily touch your problem for it to subside. The Lord can speak to the storm, and the storm has to cease. That's the shout of the text. 
that while yet God is taking care of me, he can speak to your storm at the same time, and we both get the same results. Lord have mercy. Is there anybody here that can give God any worship to know that your God is so powerful, your God is so strong, your God is so big, all he has to do is speak to the storm. know when people need me or need you sometimes we have to be tangible and present we have to be physically involved but the good news of this is God's audible command the same voice that spoke creation into existence that carved clay out of the ground and put the stars in their silver sockets. The same audible voice that spoke life is the same voice that can calm the storm. Do you care if we die? Jesus says, he re watch this, Jesus is rebuked by the disciples, but he rebukes the storm. The disciples rebuke him, but Jesus in return rebukes the storm. In the storm, y'all, you don't have time to argue with people. You don't have time to get back at folk. When the storm is taking place, you got to use the perspective that Jesus used and stay focused on what's in front of you. Yeah. Speaks to the storm. He asked a question to the disciples, which where I want to hang my hat here. And I promise we're done. He asked the question, why are you fearful? And where is your faith? Mark leaves this account kind of on a cliffhanger because he doesn't necessarily give it a Joyous end. He leaves us with a question that the disciples asked. The disciples asked, What manner of man is this that can speak to the sea and to the wind and they obey? Mark wants us to conclude for ourselves who Jesus is to us. In this particular narrative, to the disciples, Jesus was their savior in the storm. But we just can't confine Jesus to one location. So the question that I ask you is, who is Jesus to you? What manner of man is this that woke you up this morning? What manner of man is this that kept you when you could not keep yourself? What manner of man is this that picked you up out of your sin and your mock and mire and loved you with an unheard of and unconditional love? What manner of man is this that we're talking about this morning? And his name is Jesus. The one who can speak to the storm and the storm has to cease. I'm out of here, y'all. That's all I have for you. I appreciate you. The Lord bless you real good. But on my way back to my seat, I want to let you know that the God we serve can speak to the storm.
The perfect storm suggests that all the elements of the storm are working together in concert to bring about a certain outcome. And the text says that Jesus asked the disciples, why are you so fearful? And where is your faith? And the storm that was taking place was meant to perfect the faith of the disciples. And so I want to let somebody know on today that the storm that has been perfected in your life has been designed to come out with a good outcome. And the outcome is to say, for God I live, and for God I die. Is there anybody in here that can give God praise to know that while yet you're in the storm, I'm going to trust God even when the storms of life are raging, when the water may be on the ship. But the good news today is that as long as Jesus is on the ship, I know there's tomorrow. Is there anybody in here that can give God worship to know that there was a time in your life where you didn't see your way through, but the Lord spoke to your storm? The good news is that Jesus has given you the power to speak to the storm because he lives on the inside of you. You can speak to your storm. Let's test it right now. Step back real quick and speak over your life and say, I am the head and not the tail. I am the lender, not the borrower. I am victorious. I am healed. Speak over your life. Tell your storm it has to cease. Tell your storm because Jesus is your captain. You know how to make it. Can you say yeah? Can you say yeah? Speak over your storm. Speak over yourself. Encourage yourself. Let yourself know that it's I, I, always not going to be this way. And this too shall pass. Whatever that you're going through, it's going to pass. It's a brighter day tomorrow. The perfect storm for a perfect God. A perfect storm for amazing God. My God can handle all my storms. My God can take care of all my problems. I sleep good at night. I ain't worried about my haters. I'm not worried about the naysayers. I'm not worried about bill collectors because my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Microphone check one, two. Is there anybody in here that don't speak over your storm? You might be in a storm right now, but say peace. Be still, peace, be still, say peace, be still, say peace, be still, God's perfect peace, if you keep your mind stayed on him, say yeah, say yeah, speak over your storm, say storm, you got to go. Storm, you got to cease. Peace be still. Say yeah.
church, amen. Praise be to God. We have a God for a perfect storm, amen. amen. Thank you, Alagoot, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to ask that you would stand with us now as we send an invitation to Christian discipleship. There may be one that can witness that the God we serve can take care of the storms in our lives. not have to have his hand on the wheels in order to keep us going in the right direction. We give glory today to the name of Jesus. If you are watching us today by virtual means, this message the perfect storm and you can agree that the God we serve is the answer to every storm in life give him the praise give him the glory but you may be watching and you don't have that type of relationship. I wouldn't just watch. I will make up my mind today to serve a God that the storm is no match for. And that is Jesus the Christ. And so if you have not given your life to Christ, do it now. Ask the Lord to come into your heart to be the Savior of your life. Believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. The Lord wants to save you right now, right where you are. Go in prayer right where you are now, right where you are. Accept Christ as your personal Savior. Believe that he died at a hill called Golgotha. That he paid the price for your sin. Accept him now as your Savior. And if you're here with us today, and you want to accept Christ as your Savior, we ask you to come. If you want to become a part of this believing congregation, we ask you to come based upon your Christian experience. If there be one, will you come? Will you come? Thank you, Lord. Thank God you are God for a perfect storm. Thank you, Lord. It's so good to know Jesus. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. Invitation extended, and there's room at the cross. Amen. Again, we thank Ella Gooch for this inspiring message today that reminds us that the God we serve yes, can Lord. take us through the storms of life. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. That we don't have to fear, we don't have to lose it, lose it. That the God we serve can take us through the storms of life. Thank you, Ella Gooch. Yes, Amen yes. for that mighty, inspiring word. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I feel good. Amen. Yes. How many of you feel good? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're getting ready to let you go, but uh, I failed to make an announcement. I think right after service, uh, those who are being a part of a, um, I, I want to call a, um, are you meeting today? Um, yeah, those who are meeting with uh, Lenise down, do, 
meeting downstairs for a meeting, it's an epic meeting, and we are part of a research program, so that's our corporate ministry. I forgot to make that announcement. Let's get our man back on the word of God. Mm -hmm. How many of you been blessed today? Amen. How many of you been blessed today? Yes. How many of you going to leave here and tell somebody? Yes. Going to tell somebody yes. that we serve a God yes. that can take care of the storms of life. Yes. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. Amen. It's our prayer. Church, say amen. 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 If you would, stand all over this place. Please be encouraged, don't you know? Please be encouraged to know that a faith that hasn't been tested is a faith not worth having. And that God will do something about your storm. Speak to your storm. Speak peace, be still. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for the benediction as we receive the final blessing of this worship service. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God that are fully revealed in Jesus Christ, the God who has given us power to speak to the storm, be yours now henceforth and forevermore. Let us all sing together. Turn in love. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and a blessed week.